As those of you who have followed this channel for some time will have realised, I do enjoy a cappella singing. The season of Advent and Christmas is a great time to find fellow enthusiasts. Carol singing is a time-honoured tradition and is often done outdoors in places where there are no instrumentalists available. I have fond memories of singing through the 20-odd carols on the Bethlehem carol sheet twice over to commuters at Peckham Rye railway station for two hours starting at seven in the morning with friends from All Saints Church. One year I decided that commuters at my own local station of New Cross Gate should get to hear some carols too. I obtained written permission from the head office of Southern Railway which then ran the station and set myself up inside facing the one entrance to the station. The station master was pleased to see me and brought me a cup of tea. Singing one carol after another for hours on end can be quite wearing on the vocal cords. I can remember one family Christmas lunch where I could barely speak after four mornings of singing carols at Peckham Rye. Although I only planned one morning at New Cross Gate, I would be on my own and would not have the option of leaving the singing to others for a while. The solution I came up with was to preface each carol I sang with one of the scripture readings from the traditional nine lessons and carols. I chose two sets of nine carols and matched each carol to an appropriate reading. I got through the 18 carols and nine repeated readings in two hours with no loss of voice. As I have 18 days this year from Advent Sunday to the day I head out of town for my family Christmas, I thought that I would share with you all the two sets of nine carols that I chose and their accompanying readings. As I will have the luxury of just doing one reading and one carol at a time, I will say a little bit about the carol too. I'm very conscious that many carol services will have a predictable list of the four or five best known carols for the congregation to sing, and yet there are so many beautiful carols to enjoy. The bidding prayer that the traditional uh, nine lessons and carols opens, Beloved in Christ, be it this Christmas tide our care and delight to prepare ourselves to hear again the message of the angels in heart and mind to go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing that is come to pass. And with the Magi adore the child lying in his mother's arms. Let us read and mark in Holy Scripture the tale of the loving purposes of God from the first days of our disobedience unto the glorious redemption brought us by this holy child. And let us make glad this church with our carols of praise. The first days of our disobedience nicely alludes to the story of the fall in chapter 3 of the book of Genesis. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat from the trees in the garden. But God did say, you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it, or you will die. You will not certainly die, the serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realised they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He answered, 
I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, The woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree, and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly, and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. To the woman he said, I will make your pains in childbearing very severe. With painful labour you will give birth to children. Your desire will be for your husband, and he will rule over you. To Adam he said, Because you listened to your wife and ate fruit from the tree about which I commanded you, you must not eat from it. Cursed is the ground because of you. Through painful toil you will eat from it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your brow you will eat your food, until you return to the ground, since from it you were taken. For dust you are, and to dust you will return. This is a shocking and terrifying passage. It is often abbreviated to just the central section to spare audience sensibilities. But the glorious redemption brought us by this holy child makes little sense unless we understand what we are being redeemed from. The first carol on my list, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, which we sang today on the first Sunday in Advent, is laden with references to captivity, exile, tyranny, death and hell. It is only because these things are being overcome and driven away by the divine rescuer that we can rejoice. I will sing the original Latin words first, and then the English translation from hymns ancient and modern. Veni, veni, Emmanuel, Captivum solve Israel, qui gemit in exilio, privatus dei filio, gaude, gaude, Emmanuel, nascetur pro te Israel. Veni, O Jesse Virgula, ex hostis tuos, O Ungula, despecu tuos tartari, Educ et antro bara fri. Gaude, gaude, Emmanuel, nascetur pro te Israel. Veni, veni, o Oriens, Solare nos adveniens, noctis de pelle nebulas, dirasque noctis tenebras. Gaude, gaude, Emmanuel, nascetur pro te Israel. Veni clavis Davidica, regna reclude celica, fac iter tutum superum, 
et claude vias in ferum. Gaudé, gaudé, Emmanuel nascetur pro te Israel. Veni, veni Adonai, qui populo in Sinai, legem de disti vertice, in maestate gloriae. Gaudé, gaudé, Emmanuel nascetur pro te Israel. O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here, until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. O come, thou rod of Jesse, free, thine own from Satan's tyranny. From depths of hell thy people save, and give them victory o'er the grave. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. O come, thou day spring, come and cheer our spirits by thine advent here. Disperse the gloomy clouds of night, and death's dark shadows put to flight. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. O come, thou key of David, come, and open wide our heavenly home. Make safe the way that leads on high, and close the path to misery. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. O come, O come, thou Lord of might, who to thy tribes on Sinai's height in ancient times did give the law. In cloud and majesty and awe, rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel.